one has declared and the vote has declared, the voters have declared that, 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 that Biden is president, but our former president has decided that he's not gonna make it smooth. He's gonna create all kinds of waves so that we cannot go on with the business of what we need to get on with so that we can fulfill our purpose for this next administration and this next season. And when I think about that, I think of um, how sometimes when we have to move, because see, a lot of this is about him not wanting to move out of that position of power. He doesn't want to move out of the, the that, that, that position where he, he doesn't have to answer for some stuff he might have done in the past. He don't want to move out of there. He want to he want things to, to stay the same, even though reality is saying it ain't so. And uh, on a smaller scale, we quite often do that. We quite often do that. The best example I can think of is when a show came on many years ago. I, uh, uh, I apologize, young people, if, if you haven't uh, heard of this show called the Beverly Hillbillies. They struck it rich. They were living in the hills of, uh, of, of, of Arkansas or someplace like that had real country bumpkins, so to speak. And they struck oil. And so then they moved to Beverly Hills. And they never really got what needed to happen with that major transition in their lives from broke to rich. I notice also in the way of an example that when people accept Christ and pray that prayer, that it's a real challenge for them to leave the old them behind and uh, embrace the new them. It was challenging for me, maybe not you, maybe you did it all smooth, but it was challenging for me because I had been trusting and relying on me, so to speak, all those years so that when I gave my heart to the Lord and gave him really the reins, uh-oh, I'm not in charge anymore. He's in charge. When I gave him the reins, I wanted to give him, I gave him a little bit of pullback. It's like, God, I'm willing to let that go. I don't think I can let go of everything. But he's an understanding and a loving God. So he allows us to give him that resistance because he knows that if he continues to love upon us, that we'll let those reins go in due season. But we make our way better when we just keep our hands up. Get your hands off the reins. Get your hands off the steering wheel. Let the Lord drive. And we've been talking for the last few weeks about going with the flow of the Holy Spirit. And the reason we need to exalt him, lift him higher than any other voice, lift him higher than what we see, David style, yeah, you might be a seven foot tall, a 10 foot tall giant, but my God is greater. My God is bigger. My God is better than uh, any other. When I got that kind of focus and I take my hands off the wheel, I take my, I give God the reins, which means I give him the right to be able to lead and guide me any way he wants to. Oh, my goodness. I will be found guilty of this smooth transition. There'll be bumps along the way, but I'm not behind the driver's seat. I'm not behind the, I'm not in the driver's seat. So I'm trusting the one that's driving who is God, and I'm going to exalt him in such a way that my trust it's going to be completely in him and not in what I can do. 
But let me say it again, there will be bumps along the way and there will be challenges when there is, when you are in a season of transition and all of us go through them, it's life. Change and transition is a part of life. For children, the challenge of my goodness, going from tween to teen. And those of you who either had that experience or those of you who raise children, you know they go, mm, oh boy, I won't say crazy, but that, that challenge of going from, from adolescence to approaching young adulthood is big. Oh yeah, that's a big old challenge. It was big for me. Stuff, stuff start growing on you, you you didn't have before and all kind of stuff. Now, so understand that with every transition, there will be some challenges, but you have to decide who's going to be in the driver's seat. And that person you've been look at, listening to, you, it does not have all the answers. See, that's what makes it real difficult. We think we all that in a bag of chips and that we got the answers. Well, we well design. We are designer originals, but without, <laughs> without <laughs> a, a, a leaning and trusting and relying upon the one who created us, oh, we'd be jacked up. We'd be jacked up trying to do transition without them. Those of you who went from single to married or you know about that transition as well. Those of you who went from not a parent to being a parent. Those of you who have gone from maybe like the Beverly Hillbillies from dirt poor to suddenly having a whole bunch of money. There's some adjustments that you have to make. Serious adjustments and you're going to have some bumps along the way. But the smoothness for us as believers, the smoothing out of the, the transition, time of transition, <clears throat> is dependent upon our allowing the Holy Spirit to drive, allowing him to direct our steps. You see, we can't do it on our own. We are, <clears throat> we are, designer originals who cannot live without the leading of our designer. We are not independent creatures. We are to be dependent on the one who designed us because he tells us a little bit of what we are going to do and, uh, and then we have to keep going to him to get the rest of it. And when we decide, ah, like the kids do, you know, well, I'm 11 now, so I know everything. I'm 13, I know everything now, so back off, Mom. Back off, Dad. Now, you know that didn't work then, and it doesn't work in the season of transition in our lives. And sometimes, uh, the, sometimes we have to experience the reversal. We go from uh, being uh, healthy and then, then suddenly we get sick and the sickness is debilitating and, and we have to make transitions. And, and sometimes we, we live one, on one coast and then have to move to another coast and the weather is different and everything is different. The people are different and we have to make that transition without resistance. It's when we resist the Holy Spirit that it becomes challenging beyond measure. But I'm here to tell you today that a change is coming. We're in the middle of a transition and God desires to do, he's going to do a new thing. And we need to be paying attention so that we won't be left behind. You know that movement, no child left behind? We don't want to be that child of God that is left behind because we turned our ears in another direction or we started looking at and getting all the focused on what was going on rather than exalting him and getting instructions from him, zipping, zipping it up, zipping it up. 
Because we can yap, 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 yap till we blew in the face and not accomplish anything. We need to be more about being quick to listen, listen, listen. There was something going on. Uh, there was something on the internet a while back, and and this obnoxious little two or three year old was was just was trying to make his case to his mama, and he was going, listen, 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 listen. He called her name. I can't think of what it was, but it was like he was calling her by her first name. Ah, oh, that would not happen. Listen, 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 listen. Well, for us. That's our key. But it doesn't come with just the listening because that involves the ears. It comes with a heart move, a heart's decision to obey. And the thing that trips us up in times of transition is that we'll listen a little way, think we got it and say, hey, I got it from here. Boom, let me take the wheel. No all the way exalt him all the way that's what we got to be doing in this hour exalting god all the way keeping our eyes well, here we go eyes and ears on him and heart ready to obey you get a command you obey that he says sit down you obey that he says stand up you obey that time out for second guessing what God's saying. If nothing else today, Lord, let my ears be open to what you are saying and my eyes open so that I see things as you would have me to see. That's got to be our prayer. Because change is inevitable and just as there is a strangeness about the transition from one presidency to the next. There are changes in our lives that, that, that are here because he's doing something new according to scripture. Uh, he's doing something new and with the change comes a need, an even greater need for us to exalt him so that we don't get tripped up. We don't resist like our former president. We just go on with it so we can have that smooth transition. Smooth because we are obeying what the Holy Spirit is telling us to do. And we are refusing to rely on our own self-thinking. Because you know we can do that thinking thing. We can do that thinking thing and talk ourselves out of doing what God say in a second, in a heartbeat. Time out for that. We're going to put some scriptures up now. Because I want to, I want you to be packing and packing the word when you leave here. So let's look at Isaiah forty three nineteen, and would you put that up with Ecclesiastes three one to start with? Remember, we started off earlier, and and she she read, sing unto the Lord a new song, and I want you to just kind of let that kind of ride out, and the new song is going to be that song of exaltation. I love you, Lord. And I lift my voice to worship you, oh my Lord. Rejoice. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're going to praise him. We're going to love up on him because that always elevates us. That always draws us near to him. He inhabits our praises. Hallelujah. Oh, yeah, and so we want him to come on in and take the wheel. Uh, hallelujah. So uh, what did I say? I said Isaiah 43, uh, 19, and also put up uh, uh, Ecclesiastes 3, 1. E-C-C-L-E. -E. Yeah, yeah, that may, they may get it because uh, I'm sure... Uh, that's a challenge, spell ECC though, I think. Yeah, EKZ ass, yeah. Ah, all right. So what we got? We got the amplified and then, um, oh, and there it is down there. All right. All right. You ready to read for us, Miss Bree? Hallelujah. She's not on, but I'll read. Okay, go for it. Okay. 
Listen carefully. I am about to do a new thing. Now, now it will spring forth. Will you not be aware of it? I will even put a road in the wilderness, rivers in the desert. Mm -hmm. Now, that's just a few words right there, but that's a big old statement. That's a big old statement that's kind of sounding like a promise. Not only is he going to, what he's speaking of here is something that he's about to do that we're not going to, that is new to what he's done before. It's new. He's doing a new thing right up in here. It's going to spring forth, which means we can't plan uh, what well, we can do is synchronize ourselves so that we are constantly exalting him so when it comes we'll get that little agitation in our spirit and we'll know that god oh this must be it boom and when we feel that agitation so to speak then we will be aware of it and know that he's got us covered because when he puts a road in the wilderness, wilderness is where you can't see your way out. A river in the desert, that's like an oasis in the middle of the desert. Do you understand what that means when he said he's going to put a river in the desert? It means no harm. I don't care how, what's going on. I've got you. I'm your supply. Exalt me. I will show you the way. I am the way, the truth, and the life. So go on and sing that new song that we read about earlier. Go on and sing that new song. Start singing the song now. Don't wait until I do that new next new thing. Don't wait. Start singing that song of praise right now so you will be zoned in. Zoned or zoomed in on me. Because with that new thing, I've got to be in control. Because see, it's going to come forth and we don't want to be caught off guard. We want to be aware of it and, and know that he's got us covered. And the proof is that he says, if, if, if it feels if, when you feel confusion, when you feel like there's no way of escape, he says, I'm going to make a road in the wilderness. That's a miracle. And I'm going to put a river in the desert. That's a miracle. There's a reason why you exalt me. It's because I can make a way out of no way. I can make a river. I can make a river, an oasis in the desert. So position yourself to exalt me as I bring forth this new thing. And in this particular time in the, in the lives of the children of Israel, they needed to, he needed to move them from their captivity, really, uh, into a new place. And so, you know, when you've been locked up, uh, for a while and you've been locked into a certain way of thinking, sometimes or often God will say, all right, out with the old way of thinking. It's time for a new thing. And I'm going to do that new thing in you. And it's going to affect your mind. It's going to affect your feelings. And it's going to affect your choices. Because remember, when we talk about the will, we're talking about a choice. That's our chooser. The will is our chooser. So it's going to impact our mind, probably going to require a new way of thinking. The problem with the Beverly Hillbillies is that they brought that old Arkansas way of doing stuff with them over into Beverly Hills, and it freaked everybody out, including them. And that's how we be trying to do it. We be trying to pull that old way of doing. And sometimes God sets us free from a situation. And here we are. We want to roll back and get that because we're out of our comfort zone. 
You see, the, 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 I believe that the, 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 the purpose of exalting him in the midst, midst of the challenge of change is so that we won't be, uh, we won't be tempted to, to reach back and try to go back the old way to doing things the old way, like the Beverly Hills Billies was doing. They had all of this luxury in Beverly Hills, every provision that they could think of beyond their wildest imagination. And they looked at that and said, like the children of Israel, I want to go back to Egypt. I want to go back to Arkansas and do it that way. So let's pack all of Arkansas up and bring it here. It wasn't working back there. And now God has decided to open up our eyes of understanding. He decided to bring us into a new thing. So we have to let go of that old way of thinking, that old way of feeling, that old way of choosing, and embrace this new thing that God is doing and I kid you not, when we feel an agitation going on inside of us, one, ask God, what is that? When you feel irritated, agitated, kind of right around in your belly, ask God, what is that? And what do you want me to do with it? Usually it's a signal that something new is coming, something different is coming. Sometimes it's danger, sometimes not. But whatever it is, I regard that as the Holy Spirit. What you trying to say, Jesus? What, 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 what's up, Holy Spirit? Rather than freaking out and trying to, you know, he puts you in a brand new situation and it's different on Tuesday than it was on Monday. And you want to do Monday. You only want Monday. No, Tuesday is a new day. So we have to go with the flow of that. I hope you're following me today. Because we need the awareness that can only come from our relationship with him. And it's a relationship of exalting him keeping our eyes and ears on him so we won't be tripped out by what we see played out in front of us. I don't care how big the giant is, referencing David. I don't care how tall he is, how wide he is, and how whoo, mean he looks. My eyes and my ears are on the Lord. And he's got me. He's got my back. I can trust, rely, and depend on him and his greatness. Look at what he said. I'll even put a road in the wilderness. And I'll even bring forth a river in the desert. Oh, my goodness. Huh. Everybody around you kind of shouts when there's a river in the desert. Whoa. That means that not just me get to drink. That means uh, everybody get to drink. Everybody get to taste. And most of us are, are, are always thinking about our family members who, 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 who may be, you know, no, who may have zero or little interest in the Lord and you want them to be able to drink. Well, you go along with this new thing then. And you believe God to make a way out of no way. And you believe him to supply a river in the desert, which is not just for you, but for others around you to be able to drink too. Remember, it's out of our belly that flows rivers of living water. So the supply of the Lord comes forth. And there's river in the desert, those dry places. There's rivers. He, he supplies a river, rivers, not just one, rivers in the desert and in those rivers. My God, there's a flow that gives direction and there is a water to quench the thirst of those around us. It's not just for us. It's not just for us. Hallelujah. Glory to your name. He's about to do a new thing. And we are so 
ready. If we'll just abandon that that thing that we got that says, I got to reach back here and get that because I, uh, I got to have something I'm familiar with. No, let that stuff go. Let that stuff go. You ain't got no business bringing that. Them, them Beverly Hillbillies were trying to bring possums and all that other stuff and them old pots. And I can go see an episode. Go, go read, uh, uh, listen, uh, watch an episode of that on one of them channels, the Beverly Hillbillies. And you'll see that that don't work for you no more. Not in the midst of this new thing that he's doing. I don't want to see you do like our former president and think you can act like you you still the president when that ain't the case no more. What are you trying to do? Trip your old self by? You know, we got to be ready for the new thing. We got to be aware of it according to the scripture so that we can get the benefits of God of his taking care of us by putting a road in the wilderness and a river in the desert so somebody besides us can get their thirst quenched or oh, you know what a river can also do people wash in the river and we're cleansed by the washing of the water of the word so when you hear those references to water and rivers and stuff like that know that there's the cleansing that comes from the word and then there's the quenching the cleansing which is done with the word. And then there is the, 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 the quenching, quenching the thirst, quenching the thirst. Hallelujah. Praise your name, Jesus. And as I scroll down, read that ecclesiastic scripture, please. There is a season a time appointed for everything and a time for every delight and event or purpose under heaven. All right. Oh, let's go. Let's go. Uh, uh, go back to the top and make that three, one through three, so that we can see a little bit more. Uh, can, can, can you scroll back and, uh, and, and, and open that third chapter of Ecclesiastics up so that we can, cause I want you to leave, uh, 4319 there, but I want you to open up a little bit more and make that three, one through three. Yeah, that'll work. All right. And push that little thing. Yeah. All right. Uh, oh, there it is. Yeah. And so this is just a, a, a small portion of, 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 of what we can expect when there is a change of seasons. It says, uh, she said, uh, I heard her read that there's a season, a time appointed for everything and a time for every delight and event or purpose under heaven. A time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to uproot what is planted, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to tear down and a time to build up. And I would that you would read the rest of Ecclesiastics, that third chapter, and you will see that because God is getting ready to do a new thing, it is the new season. And we will not be able to think, we will not be able to feel, and we will not be able to choose the way we did in a previous season. The new thing requires a change on the inside in us. We don't need to drag that stuff, them old habits, them old behaviors. That's what uh, got us in that captivity in the first place. You see, when you're in captivity, you don't have any control of anything. You're just bound. And so, and you'd be thinking, how did I get in this mess? How did I get like this? And God wants you to, he wants to set you free. And you don't get free and then say, okay, well, I got to go back over there and get them possums and that pot and all that other stuff. When he's got a whole bunch of great stuff for us. 
And even along the way, he didn't say it was going to be easy making the transition. He didn't say that the transition was going to be easy, but he did say my provision is going to be off the chain. It ain't just your usual provision. I'm going to make a way out of no way. And that way, the wilderness, a lot of times the wilderness is in our mind. I can't see that. I'm, you know, we'd be like, oh, which way do I go? Which way do I go? Ooh, huh? Confusion, 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 confusion. Oh, my God. Confusion be the wilderness sometimes. I don't know which way to go. Well, the provision of the Lord is I will make a way in the wilderness, a road in the wilderness, so you will know where to go, so that you'll know the direction that you must move in. It's not going to come from you. It's going to come by your exalting him, keeping your eyes and your ears on him. Change. Transition does not have to be a disaster. It don't have to make everybody crazy around you like we're seeing played out in Washington, D.C. And now we're at the point now where some of us are, are just simply, oh boy, just two through and just, man, just go, you know. And so, but when we think about that, on the scale of just us and God trying to move us out of our captivity, out of that place where we no longer, it's no longer the season for us to be where we are, where we've been. It's time for him to move us forward. And that's going to be a challenge because before you were in bondage and thought you had to be in that situation doing what you were doing and you no longer, he says, no longer do you get to be there. I'm moving you out. I'm doing a new thing. And yes, there will be challenges as I move you to a new way of thinking, a new way of feeling, and a new way, oh my God, of choosing. Your choices were off. Your thoughts were off. Your, mm, mm, the way you felt about stuff was kind of janky compared to what he has for you. Hmm. New thing. Behold, I am doing a new thing. New thing. If you're here today, God is trying to do, is, is about to do a new thing in your life, and I don't want you to miss it. I don't want now one of us to miss this new thing that God is going to do that'll thrust us into that season that we need to be in his master plan for our lives. I don't want to drag out no season that I'm in. I want to, I want his perfect will in his way in my life. You can think you're running stuff, but if you find yourself going back and grabbing that old way of doing stuff and that old way of, of, of thinking and that old way of thinking you de need to depend on that or that, uh-uh. Mm-mm. Come into the now. Exalt the Lord. And all of your ways acknowledge him. Let him direct your paths. He's got the way. And he knows how to bring on a river in the middle of a desert. My God, what a mighty God we serve. Now, let's go to Proverbs 12, 15. Just add to what we have so that I can kind of review in the end. 
Let's go to Proverbs 12, 15. And then also put up Ezekiel 36, 26. Proverbs 12, 15. Oh, there it is. <laughs> Can y'all see that screen? Read it, Lisa. The way of the arrogant fool who rejects God's wisdom is right in his own eyes. But a wise and prudent man is he who listens to counsel. <laughs> so you see, what that says is that and this is talking to all of us who think we know better than God on those occasions. None of us in here think we know better all the time, but there are some of us who think that we know better some of the time. And that makes us, what is it? It says a fool is someone who rejects God's wisdom. That, and, 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 and as far as that person is concerned, or as, as far as we are concerned when we are going with the flow of us rather than the flow of what the Holy Spirit is saying. We think we're right in our own eyes. We be thinking we're right. We be thinking we're right. But it ain't so. A wise and a prudent man is he who listens to counsel. And the counsel is the Lord. The counsel is his word. But if we stay in that position of being exalt, of exalting him, stay in the position of exalting the Lord and keeping our eyes and ears on him, then we don't want, we have to worry about resorting to listening to our own self and making our own self our best counsel. Uh-uh, uh-uh, that got you where you are now in that place that you don't, no longer can be in anymore. It's time for a new thing. And with new things comes new way of thinking, new attitudes, new way of ways of managing your emotions, and new choices. Last thing we want to do is be a Beverly Hillbilly sitting in the palace in the Beverly Hills. Still looking like a, a hillbilly. Scroll down, please. This is one of the most blessed promises in the word as far as I'm concerned. Because we do tend to think that we are all right. But this scripture says that there's a promise that God and Ezekiel was a prophet, so he was speaking things. And he said, moreover, I will give you a new heart. Whatever your heart has taught you to date. Because it's our heart that teaches us. We listen to our heart and we start obeying our heart. And that's also where the contents of our every hurt and every, every, all that stuff is up there in that heart. And we start listening to our heart and the heart is deceitful. Above all things, desperately wicked. Who can know it? The heart don't, mm. So he says, I give you a new heart and put a new spirit within you and I will remove the heart of stone from your flesh and give you a heart of flesh. The heart of flesh is one that is flexible, that is pliable, that God can mold into what he desires to be. And nobody loves us more than our God. And nobody has our best interest at heart like our God. Nobody can see our future like our God. Nobody was there when our substance was formed, but our God. 
So when we start to get feeling ourselves or smelling ourselves, that's what we accuse teenagers. Uh, we say, you smelling yourself, huh? You think you know all that and all that? No, 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 uh-uh. That'd be us. And what we have to remember is that even in the midst of that, God loves us so much. He said, look, I'm going to give you a new one. <laughs> and I'm going to give you, this new one is going to be pliable in my hands. Just go with the flow. I'm doing a new thing. Stop tripping. Stop relying, trusting, and depending on you and your own self-wisdom. Stop doing that. That ain't going to take you where you need to go. It's not going to take you there. The way of a fool is right in his own eyes, but he who listens to counsel is wise. We want to walk in wisdom, not foolery. Correct? Am I the only one in here? Ah. And then the other thing that we must do, we must Make sure we understand that our allowing God, uh, our going along with, our going with the flow of the new thing that God desires to do in us and in our various situations, especially those things that have us bound, we'll be so attached to that stuff, so attached to that way of thinking so attached to that way of feeling that we just kind of go, <laughs> it's become so much a part of us. And he so wants to break us out of there and set us free so that we can exalt him some more and get all of the benefits that come from being his child so that we can go with the flow of his Holy Spirit without having so many train wrecks. Oh, I thank God this morning that he loves us so greatly. Hallelujah. He loves us like that. He completely loves us. Hallelujah. But I don't want you to forget this week that when you feel that agitation, that it's the Holy Spirit, regard it as the Holy Spirit, and ask him, what up, Lord? What do you want me to do? What am I missing here? Ask him those questions, because it's him tugging on you to make a change so that the new thing will not throw you off course. He's got a plan and a purpose for our lives, and it's a, a, a plan to prosper us and to give us peace in the final outcome. <laughs> and in order for that outcome to come, we got to go with the flow of him, which means we have to keep him exalted because the world is crazy. The world is crazy, and we're designed to impact the world in one way or another. And so let's take heed to this word today and remember that he's doing a new thing. He doesn't want it to catch us off guard. It's going to spring forth, he said, so he doesn't want it to catch us off guard. And we've got to be aware of it when it hits. And the way to be aware of it when the new thing springs forth is to be in God's presence, to be tuned in to the Lord so that we can hear and see. And we've got to also know. We've got to also know that he's gonna make a way out of that place of confusion if that's where you live, out of that place of total dependency on your own self wisdom. He can break us out of that. Making a way in the wilderness. Some of us be running around in circles doing the same thing the same old way and getting them same old raggedy results and won't change. But God is saying today, I'm about to do a new thing in you. So don't block it, y'all. Let's not block it. Let's not block it. Don't block.
about what he's about to do. Know that we can trust, rely, and depend on him to make a way, even on our crazy days. And a river in the desert, that's a supply. That's a miraculous supply when it looks like there's just not enough of anything that I need. And it's not just, as I said earlier, it's not just a supply that will take care of us, but it'll take care of those family members and those people around you that you have influence over, but they ain't moving in the direction of the Lord at all. That ought to be enough to make you want to say hallelujah. Change and transition is a way of life. It's coming, and we don't want to be stuck where we are. We want to be able to go with the flow. So just go with the flow of him from the jump street. Stay in that place where you're constantly exalting him, and some of us are marvelous at that. But since he said before that he's coming for our storage, know that you are not done. There's something he's got to free you from. So let him do it. Let's go with the flow of what he's saying regarding this new thing and know that he's got our back. He's got us completely covered. Amen. All right. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God, for the new song. Play that final song and uh, I'll pray for anybody that needs. Well, let me ask, does anybody need prayer? on today. Hallelujah. Everybody, nobody needs prayer. Hallelujah. Star six, if you uh, if you're trying to say something. Trish do. Hi, everybody. Okay. Hi, Trish. All right. You need prayer? How y'all doing? You need prayer? What to say? All yes, right. ma'am. All right, let me pray for you, and then we'll hear that song. Father, we just thank you, God, for Trish. God, we thank you, God, for the very desire of her heart, Father, to connect with you in a, a way she's not yet connected before, Father. She wouldn't be asking for prayer, Father, if she didn't need a strengthening, Father, of her connection with you, God, because you're our source, God. And when something is awry in the connection, God, it means we don't get that full flow of the fountain that is available to us, Father. So I pray, Father, that you would strengthen her connection with you, God, so that she's able beyond measure to exalt you as never before, Father. I pray, Father, that you would clean her eyesight, God so that she's able to see herself and everything around her through the lens that you have provided her with, Father. Clear out her ears, Father. So all of that old stuff that's been packed in for years, God, that that is no longer an influence over her, Father. But so let her hear and see with new eyes and ears so that she can fulfill the purpose that you have for her. And I take authority right now over any plan that the enemy has to thwart what your plan is, God. And I render it helpless in the name of Jesus, God. Let her focus on you, get the truth of your word in her, Father, and obey that which she hears, God, even with the rising of old ways of thinking, God. Give her a new heart, Father, that's pliable in your hand. And I think she shall not return to any old way that does not benefit the direction that you are desiring to send her in, Jesus. Thank you for the new thing that you're about to do in her life and let her response be one that pleases you. I thank you for the provision in the wilderness in her life 
And I thank you, God, for the rivers in the desert, the cleansing rivers, the thirst quenching rivers. So bless her, God, now. Bring forth healing in her body as you bring it in her soul. And I thank you, God, for your hand of protection around her mind so that all thoughts line up with your perfect will. And I bless your name for what you're going to do, God, and for the rest of us, God, who have heard this word today. I pray that there will be no backward steps, no attempts to return to the way we used to do things, God. But that will completely go with the flow that you are sending us in, God, without hesitation. For those who did not make it today, Father, I pray, God, that you would literally, God, open their eyes of understanding and draw them all the more to you so that they can be where they need to be at any given point in time. Thank you for this word. I thank you that it shall not return unto you void, but it will indeed prosper in the places that you sent it to in the hearts and minds of all who are here and all who have heard. Prosper us, Jesus. And I bless your name. And I thank you. I thank you, God, in Jesus' name. Amen. Now we want to play that next song. And I want you to just soak on it and let the Lord talk to you for a couple of minutes. Go ahead and play it, Lisa. Hallelujah. Glory to your name, Jesus. So let's continue to allow uh, that kind of thinking to really penetrate your thinking the rest of this day and as you go into the new, new week uh, and uh, just believe God to, to do a work in you uh, as we go forward. Um, and the one thing I do want to uh, remind you and that is there is a group of people that you were especially designed to, um, to impact. Uh, uh, God does not do things haphazardly. And so uh, some of those people are supposed to be sitting here with you in these types of sessions. So ask the Lord who you should invite for next Sunday and then begin to pray for that person so that they might come in alignment with the will of God for their life and where they spend their Sundays. And so I thank God for each of you for uh, coming through and being a blessing to us. We can't do this uh, without you. And I'm thankful for you for certain. And I love you so, so very, very much and um, I really just thank God for for each of you and uh, and I know God wants to do great and new things in our lives. Just watch this week uh, when we come together on Tuesday. Bring any questions that you might have. We're still talking about the armor of God, and uh, we know we're in battle still. We know we're at war. Uh, but this new thing that God wants to do in us is going to be life changing. So uh, let's let's be on board with it and not resist in any way. Um, those of you who uh, 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 remember our the way we give, uh, we can't pass no tray like we would if we were live. But um, uh, we, we, we offer this opportunity for you to give on Givelify or, um, uh, uh, and, and that's a good safe site for you to use. And so I thank God for those of you who have already given and uh, keep giving because uh, you can't beat God giving no matter how hard you try. And so we want to constantly keep the, uh, the flow of uh, giving 
uh, being that careful giver that God is calling all of us to be. Uh, I look forward to seeing you this week on Tuesday as well as on um, Sunday. And pray for those people that we normally see that are not here today. I mean, the enemy works overtime to distract us. And this is the place that God would have us to not forsake uh, the assembling. He says, do not forsake the assembling of the saints. And so when we come together, we're an encouragement one to another. And so let's pray for those that are missing today and for those that are on their way. You know, they'll, they'll tell you over and over again, I'm coming, I'm coming, I'm coming. So let's pray for them uh, to make sure that they find their way into the household of, uh, household of faith here so that they can be blessed with the word that comes forth and with the music and everything else. I love you and I, um, I thank God for you and all you bring to the table. And uh, I think that uh, we're going to uh, uh, bring on our, our, our little deacon and let him close us out uh, in, um, uh, uh, with, with the word uh, from uh, Revelation 22, 21. Go forth, uh, Gina. Wait, where? The grace of the Lord Jesus, the Christ, of the Messiah, 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 with be with all the saints, saints, all believers, those who I mean set apart for or God, Amen. All right, all right. So go with grace today. That's his divine favor. And thank you, uh, Mr. Mature, for praying that blessing over us, speaking that blessing over us. And we go, I don't know about you, but I'm going to go. I'm going to take that grace and run with it. Okay? All right. So I love y'all. Call me if you need me. And uh, uh, without any further ado, you've heard the benediction and the good words spoken over us. And so let us then be dismissed in Jesus' name. All right. Bye, everyone. Love you guys. See you Tuesday. All okay, right. bye. Have a great Monday. All Thank right. You too. Bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye.